extraterrestrials, denizens of the internet, and general amorphous blobs of space and matter in the universe. That was weird, I'm gonna do that again. <laughs> Hello to all my darling extraterrestrials out there. I am Kim, this is Dust Motes and Velocore, and today we are doing the Netflix book tag. Number one, recently watched. The last book you finished reading. This one is easy, I just finished The Invisible Library by Genevieve Cogman. It was really interesting and I just started Masked City. I'm really excited because I already have the burning page and the lost plot just came out and I'm hoping it's already in paperback. If not, I will acquire a copy at some point in the future, but I'm going to read it and I'm super excited. Yay! Number two, top picks, which is hard to say. Top picks, top picks, top picks. Number two, top picks. <laughs> I really hate that phrase, top uh, but anyway, it's a book or books that have been recommended to you based on things that you've already read and liked. People keep telling me that I should read The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak, but the hype is such that I'm kind of scared to read it. And a friend has been pushing the Disney villains novels on me. I really should read them. I got really mad a few, a few pages in because they called the queen the queen before she was the queen, but that's the only way they refer to her. And I get that it's like gonna be like a big reveal, like it's her name, like we have to find out what the evil queen's name is, but she wasn't a queen. And it's not told in like a, a we look back on this time and we think of these things and she was the queen and this was before she was the queen, but she's still the queen. Like they didn't do it in that way. It's very, it's very like, emotional and, and personal and it's like, no nah, man, you gotta give her a name. But uh, also they moved a well. That really bugged me. Like the king was like, yeah, we, we took the well that was in your backyard and we brought it here and we made this garden for you. And it's like, you can't move a well. It's a well. And that's all in like the first 20 pages. So, um, I really just needed to get off my high horse and just read my friend's favorite books, but I'm struggling, okay? I'm not perfect. Number three, recently added. This is the last book you bought. I'm not 100% sure because I bought like, like 20 books? No, that's not true. I bought like 15 books and they all came in like four different shipments. The last one that arrived though, was um, my very delightfully battered copy of Callahan's Cross Time Saloon by Spider Robinson. Okay, this book is, it's a series of short stories that were originally published in Analog, which is a sci-fi magazine. They're philosophical and they're punny, but then like, if you read them when you're up, they are the funniest, best thing to help you find like another human connection. And if you read them when you're down, the shit hits you hard. <laughs> when I got this book, I was down and I tried to read it because I remember when I was a kid, they brought me up so much. And then I read the first section, the first story, and well, um, let me find you this spot. See, I used to have a wife and daughter before I decided to install my own brakes. I saved $30, easy. And I just broke, I just broke again. So, um, yeah. So, <laughs> most recent book I bought and why it's currently breaking my heart. Number four, popular on Netflix. Books that everyone knows about. Two that I would recommend and two that I have no interest in reading. So Strange the Dreamer is possibly the best book I've read definitely this year and possibly ever. That might be overstating it, but it's definitely on my list of all-time favorite love, recommend to everyone, just I can't. I love Strange the Dreamer. <laughs> Lady Taylor is a goddess. And then Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo is also well known to everyone, but oh my goodness. If you want a simultaneously hilarious and dramatic heist that is set in a magical universe and, you know, has a lot of morally ambiguous characters, <laughs> this is definitely the one for you. I love Lee Bardugo. 
Oh my goodness. Books that I'm not really interested in. The Selection series by Kira Cass. Crucify me if you will, I just can't do it. I, I read like part of the first one, I don't remember, and it's basically a reality television show. And it's just so dumb. I'm sorry. I can't do it. Another one I have no intention of picking up is Three Dark Crowns by Kendara Blake. Kendare? Kendare Blake? I don't know, but I have no intention of reading their book. It's nothing personal. I just, I think I read the first two or three pages and I was like, I can't do this. I can't deal with this. Like, this is improbable to the nth degree and also formulaic and also nobody needs another Hunger Games. Number five, comedies. This one is just subtitled A Funny Book. So, um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. Though that one does feel kind of like cheating by picking it. Um, Princess Bride, William Goldman, My Heart, just, this book knocked my socks off. It is, <laughs> like within the book they explained that like, oh yes, S. Morgenstern's true intention was a satirical takedown of the elite class and no, it's just hilarious. <laughs> Number six, drama. Name a character who is a drama king or queen. <sighs> Eugenides. <laughs> Number seven, animated. A book with cartoons on the cover. Boom. Dinotopia. Also, let it be known that the miniseries bears very little resemblance to the book. Read the book. The book is pretty darn good. Number eight, watch it again. A book or books that you would reread. Ha! This is hilarious because I, before I started booktube, I basically only reread books. Um, I would like collect the ones that were my favorites and I would actually tote them with me to all of the different places that I lived. And now that I'm more settled, I'm actually starting to read new books so that I can get new books. <laughs> but, oh my goodness. Um, I guess the question can be morphed into books I reread a lot. Um, I read Ender's Game probably like 12 times. Um, I have read The Daughter of the Forest maybe like 18 times. That one, that one's really close to my heart. But um, yeah, all of them. That's the answer is, is everything you see here. Number nine, documentaries. A nonfiction book that you would recommend to everyone. Y'all should read Chronology of Water, okay? It is poignant and it is brilliant. And also it's non-linear and also it just like kind of circumnavigates the rules of English and yet is still so communicative. So yeah, just read Chronology of Water and send my thanks to my women's studies professor because oh my goodness, she recommended this book and she actually required it for a course and I just love it. <laughs> Number 10, action, an action-packed book. Now, I've already said The Invisible Library by Genevieve Cogman. It was my first response to one of these questions. So, uh, but other than that one, I would say Nixia by Scott Rankin. Number 11 is New Releases, a book that has come out recently or is coming out soon. I literally just made a video about my 13 books that I'm most excited about. Uh, in the coming year, so I'm gonna link to that here. But for now, I have to say Muse of Nightmares, October 2nd, Lainey Taylor. I'm just... <sighs> I'm sorry. Number 12 is Tag Some People, so I'm calling out Hummingbird Books. Allison Clay, I'm tagging you, so now you have to make another YouTube video. You're welcome! Laura Mayfair, I am tagging you in this, and if you don't want to, I totally understand, but I think you really should. And that's it. Thank you for watching my Netflix book tag, and thank you to the original creator of the tag, A Darker Shade of Whitney. And that's all, folks. A bientôt!